Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up as we once again have a look at some of the games coming out on the Nintendo Switch in this upcoming week. We're going to be looking at games that release from the 7th of November up until the 13th and at the time of recording this video, the coming soon page on the eShop is a bit light in all honesty, so if there is anything that drops after this, please do feel free to put it in the comment section below. Okay, with all that said, let's get started. First for the week then, coming out on the 8th, we have Return One Way Trip. This is a 2D side-scrolling horror game with puzzle and adventure elements thrown in. This has been out on Steam for a little while and has middling scores over there and has an overall Metacritic score of about 70%, but I must be honest, even with that in mind, it does intrigue me. It tells the story of five students that go away on a post-graduation vacation, although when one of them, Saki, awakens in the night to find her friends missing, she makes her way to an abandoned passenger train and that's when things really start to go weird. I really like the look of the visuals, it has a pixel art style and it reminds me in some respects of Yamawari, albeit this one obviously is a 2D game whereas that was from an isometric viewpoint. It includes two playable characters, an original soundtrack and a storyline that revolves around both the past and the present. It's selling for £9.99 or your regional equivalent and as I said it's coming out on the 8th. Next out on the 10th we have Fusa, a music rhythm game from the people behind Rock Band and Dance Central. This sees you taking on the role of a DJ at a music festival. You must line up the records in your crate, picking particular songs and laying them on the record players in front of you. The instruments from that music will then be added to the mix. It includes over 100 songs and you can play in a campaign mode, a freestyle mode or even complete in multiplayer challenges online. It's selling for £60, although I do think it has a physical release that you may be able to pick up cheaper, but there's also a bundle version that sells for £100. That bundle seems to come with about 25 new songs plus a few other bits and bobs, but that's quite a markup though, isn't it? £100. The concept certainly sounds interesting, but that's too high a price for me. Anyway, it comes out on the 10th. And then we have Sukuna of Rice and Ruin. Due to release on the 10th, although this is just in the US for now, it's coming out a bit later in other regions, around about the 20th. This sees you playing as a harvest goddess called Sukuna who sees herself banished from her celestial home to an island overrun with demons. Not only must you battle the demons, but it also seems to have a farming element to it as well. It reminds me very much, in fact, of the game Muramasa the Demon Blade, which was on the Wii back in the day, and it was on the Vita, I believe, as well. Albeit, again, with some sort of farming element to it, almost like Story of Seasons Muramasa Edition. You must use your farm tools as weapons as you take on the side-scrolling action parts, chaining combos together to defeat the demonic beasts. You also have a magical element to it too, which will help you to grapple distant platforms and beat enemies. The farm sim sections seem to be in 3D, and you must cultivate and perfect crops, with the quality of your crops correlating directly to your combat skills, it says here. You can then use the crops that you make to create weapons, armor, and meals for yourselves to take on your adventures. This one sounds like a lot of fun actually, and this is one of the games that we'll be reviewing next week. Goddess, should we plant something in this field? I have some rice husks right here. We plant rice. Sakuna grows strong, yes? Also on the 10th we have Speed Free Grand Prix. This says you'll be picking your favourite Formula racing car and driving on a variety of courses around the world. It says here you will race through the American wastelands, tear up the asphalt of the German circuit, compete in the British countryside and drift through the neon filled streets of Tokyo. It makes a point here of saying how accessible the car handling is and mentions the word arcade quite a few times. There are a few different game modes available and cars to unlock. Now I did read somewhere else about this game, it's not written here on the eShop, there was a notice on another advertisement which made it very clear that this is not a simulation, and whilst I don't know if it's straight up arcade either, it's probably somewhere in between, from what I read elsewhere anyway. It's selling for £26.99 here in the UK, I think it has a higher price point in some other regions but a pre-order discount to try and compensate, and there will be a physical version of this game available I've seen, already selling for slightly cheaper than this eShop price.
Moving on to the 12th and we have a deceptively simple looking puzzle game named Line Light. In this it looks as if you must move a small ball of light across a track manipulating the track in certain ways to try to get to the goal. Examples shown in the trailer see platforms that move, rotate, either blocking your path or giving you access, with colour coded parts meaning you have to really think about the order in which you do things. It says here there are 6 worlds and over 200 puzzles, with each new world introducing new mechanics. It mentions the soothing music which for me is a huge plus in games such as these, they're nice games to play at night with headphones on, and also makes a point of saying that anyone can play in terms of its accessibility, but I'm sure as is always the case with these sort of games, it gets devilishly difficult towards the end and will really have you thinking. It's selling for £8.99 which for me just pushes it away from impulse buy for a puzzle game, I never spend too much on games such as these, but I will certainly stick it on the wishlist and wait for a sale. And then on the 13th we have Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory, which is a rhythm game based on the very popular Kingdom Hearts series. Now everything I know about Kingdom Hearts I know through osmosis, and I've got to be honest it's quite an intimidating series to try and get into because every time you look at a game in a shop it has a title like Kingdom Hearts Part 13.5 or 33 and a third, it's very confusing. It says in this version you can enjoy a massive variety of music from both the Kingdom Hearts series and Disney with a collection of over 140 songs. Now whilst I don't know much about this particular series, I did play and very much enjoy the two theatre rhythm games that came out for the Final Fantasy series. So I wonder if this will be anything like those. It doesn't look like it in terms of the screenshots, at least in terms of the setup of the screen, but in terms of the mechanics of the rhythm, I wonder if it works in a similar way. It's selling for £49.99 or your regional equivalent, but it does have a demo available now which is always good to see. If anyone could put a basic synopsis for what Kingdom Hearts is, story wise I mean, in the comments section that would be much appreciated. All I've really gathered from it is that the main character looks like he's wearing Mickey Mouse's shorts and shoes and carries a big key about with him whilst having Disney characters help him attack people in battle. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot more to it than that. <laughs> Another big game next we have Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered. This is a game that came out in 2010 back on the Xbox 360, the PS3 and the Wii, albeit the Wii version was very different from what I remember. This is an open world driving game which sees you either playing as the gangs or as the police, each with their different strengths and weaknesses, and you can play a campaign from either side. In terms of this remastered version then, it includes cross-platform play which is actually really nice to see, fair play, and has all of the DLC released for the game back in the day included as standard. The visuals have been enhanced and it also says that they have included a host of quality of life features, although it doesn't go into the specifics. It's selling for £34.99 which is actually £10 cheaper than the remaster of Burnout Paradise that came out a few months back and it's a game that got very good scores back in the day, well except for that Wii version that I mentioned earlier. And finally for the week we have Vera Blank Full Moon, which is a visual novel which came out about 10 years ago now on iOS. This is part one of two games in this series that came out, and they're told in quite an interesting comic book style. I'm not going to pretend that I knew anything about the games from back in the day, but I did read a moment ago that they scored fairly well, for what they were at least, and this first one is priced at £4.99. There are decisions to make and puzzles to solve as you go along, and the main character also has the ability to read minds of other characters. So there you have it for this week, I haven't included as many games this week because I'll be honest, past the ones I've mentioned, the rest was looking pretty ropey and I don't want to waste anyone's time. I mean if you want me to talk about Santa Christmas Adventure on the 7th of November, fair enough, but I thought that maybe I'll leave that one for now. There aren't as many games listed on the eShop at this moment like I said at the beginning of the video so it might just be a slow week of uploads and if anything interesting has since dropped please as I said do stick it in the comments section. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe of course and until next time, happy gaming.